This is the audio and video version of Chaya Heller's Questioning Oshalan's Jewish Question. In January 2021, a fellow instructor from the Institute for Social Ecology sent me sections of The Sociology of Freedom, the third volume of a series of books by the imprisoned leader of the Kurdistan Workers' Party, PKK, Abdullah Oshalan, asking if I found the writing anti-Semitic. He had been contacted by a member of a US social ecology study group seeking confirmation from social ecology scholars that the text was not anti-Semitic. Containing such passages as a Jewish monopoly has always existed in the financial sector and nation statism derives from Hebrew tribal ideology, however, it was immediately clear to me that the text was riven with anti-Semitic narratives about Jewish relationships to capital and state power, both in the present day and as ahistorical explanations of their emergence in early modern Europe. Even where portraying Jewish people in a seemingly nuanced or positive light, the book's arguments about them nevertheless rest upon false ideas about a trans-historical Jewish institutional power. The study group member was stuck at a painful impasse. While the group's Jewish members were troubled by the text's anti-Semitic pages, the non-Jewish members saw no anti-Semitism at all. Even though my colleague at the Institute for Social Ecology explained that the writing was indeed filled with anti-Semitic tropes, the group's debate wore on. About a month after this conversation, we learned that the group had dissolved, leaving some Jewish members demoralised with the left more generally. For those unfamiliar with Abdullah Oshalan, he is the symbolic and intellectual leader of the Kurdish freedom movement, whose Rojava revolution in northern Syria is perhaps the most promising leftist experiment in direct democracy ever. They have been organising since 2012 to create this new society, all while fighting ISIS as well as Russian, Turkish and Syrian state forces seeking to annihilate them. There is a strong political alignment between Oshalan's work and social ecology, a body of writings developed primarily by political theorist Murray Bookchin. Beginning in the 1950s, Bookchin developed a vision of a directly democratic and ecological world free, from, free of hierarchical formations such as the state, capitalism, racism and patriarchy. Oshalan encountered Bookchin's work while in prison in the early 2000s. This engagement was significant in shifting Oshalan and the movement he leads from a fairly conventional Marxist-Leninist national liberation struggle to a decentralised ecological and feminist politics he called democratic confederalism. As a faculty member of the Institute for Social Ecology for nearly 40 years, I've long been excited by the synergy between social ecology and the Kurdish freedom movement. It had never occurred to me that Oshalan's revolutionary writings would promote anti-Semitism or bigotry of any kind. In response to this situation, I pored over Oshalan's collected works, particularly the three published volumes of Manifesto for a Democratic Civilization. I was saddened to note a consistent thread throughout the three volumes of Oshalan portraying a Jewish power linked to the rise of money, capitalism, the nation state and even the Holocaust. Wondering if years of imprisonment had affected his thinking, I consulted a range of scholars long familiar with Oshalan's work. Unfortunately, they confirmed rather than dispelled the concerns around anti-Semitism. I interviewed Cory Gutstadt, a German scholar who has been involved in solidarity work for Kurdistan on different platforms, independent from the PKK, since the 1980s. Gutstadt said that Oshalan's blatant anti-Semitism was addressed and criticised in several left-wing publications in Germany in the 1990s. However, there was no reaction neither from the ranks of the organisation itself nor from the ranks of the PKK-dominated Solidarity Movement. She was puzzled that much of the international left were still unaware of Oshalan's history of producing anti-Semitic writings. As The Sociology of Freedom was first published in 2008 by a Turkish press, by the time PM Press published the book, the core writings were at least 13 years old. 
As Gutstadt explained, Oshalan came of age as a leftist in Turkey's overtly anti-Semitic political culture. Though Kurds are an oppressed minority in Turkey, Kurdish leftists often absorb Turkish anti-Semitic portrayals of US Jews as controlling an imperialist system that led in turn to Turkish fascism. As Gutstadt said, Leftists don't tend to recognize anti-Semitic tropes in Turkey because they're normalized within the political culture as accurate. My purpose in writing here is to carefully comb through Oshalan's writings about Jewish people. I discuss five main anti-Jewish tropes that surface in his writing by raising five questions about what Oshalan calls the Jewish question. I hope that by reading what follows, leftists may become better able to identify and address anti-Jewish narratives when they see them. I also hope that groups like the one that contacted the Institute for Social Ecology aren't demoralised and ultimately dissolved by a collective failure to understand and respond to instances of anti-Jewish racism when they arise in our movements. I seek to raise the bar for what counts as anti-racism in the broadest sense and deepen our movement's understanding of how prejudice against Jews operates and distorts our social analysis. This is especially important when such ideas are parroted by the most important living thinker in the social ecology tradition, whose works are being distributed to and read by millions of people around the world. As critical readers, we need to be able to differentiate and disentangle Oshalan's mistaken damaging ideas about Jewish power from the vital intellectual work of democratic confederalism.